there, my fire-breathing bitch goblins. It's Breland here. I'm gonna be diving right into the story. Give me just a second. Of course, I'm gonna plug my OnlyFans. You get used to it. OnlyFans.com slash Breland Emery or GlitterClitter.com. That's right. It'll be linked at the top of the description below. And I also have a super amazing surprise. My OnlyFans is only $3 right now. Yay. So it's 40% off the regular $4.99 price. So if you want to go check it out, I have a lot of new content on there and then you'll get to see all of my past content as well. Let's dive back into the past, which wasn't even that long ago. Actually it was. I don't know why. It just seems like yesterday that I went broke and I was poor. It just seems like it was only a year ago for me when in reality it was about three years ago. If you're new here, let me just give you a quick backstory. So I used to have the channel Glitter Forever 17. That's what I was known as. I did a lot of trendy videos. When the trends went out of style, that's when my channel started to tank. And then Adpocalypse happened and I had about 400 grand in the bank at the time. I'd spent a lot of money on a house and renovations. So all in all, what happened was after Adpocalypse, my views fell off so bad that I wasn't making anything. It hit me so hard, it knocked my channel like out of the algorithm. None of my videos would even get the amount of views they used to get. But since the views started to fall off, so did the ad revenue and so did the brands. So that was like getting hundreds of dollars per video to getting just dollars. That's how big of a deal it was. I was completely devastated over it. I tried my hardest. I reached out to brands I had talked to and worked with in the past, social media managers, companies, everything. But since my views were so low compared to what they were in the past. They were like, mm, we don't want to work with you. You can't get us the promo that we want. So fuck you. I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do. I did eventually lose my house. It took me a long time to accept the fact that I was broke. And Slava which is my husband, he came to that realization a lot sooner than I did within the first few months of the adpocalypse. He was like, we're broke. We have to start looking at the money that we're spending. I was so used to just buying whatever I wanted. And yeah, I would still look at price tags, but they didn't always matter. So here's the thing, in my mind, I still had a little money. At, at this point, I had about, 30 grand in the bank. And that was pretty good. And I was holding on to this. Slava would joke and he'd be like, we're poor now, we can't get this. So we can't get that. Like he faced reality really soon. Me on the other hand, because I had made this fortune. Seven years of my life was spent, put in to this channel, and now it's basically gone. It's not bringing in money anymore. Like, I could barely get a thousand dollars a month at that point. It was so bad, and I was thinking in my mind constantly, like, I'm gonna get another brand deal. I'm gonna start building up my money again. That's all I thought I could do is just like start building it up again. But as soon as I would maybe get a little tiny brand deal and build it up a little, that house note would come in. Like I kept asking myself like, why? Why can't you make this money anymore like you used to? Like whenever my money would start to go down, I would be able to make a bunch of videos and get some brand deals and I was easily able to build my money back up again. This was a process that I had went through many, many times of spending a big sum of money and then going back to YouTube, making the money and building it right back up to that same happy number again. After paying all these bills and knowing that I was gonna probably lose my house anyway, I maybe had about 10 grand left. So that's when I started to think, okay, I can make this money back. Even though I lost 20 grand and I have 10 grand left, at least I have 10 grand. I can build on top of that. And I tried and I tried and I tried. The revenue was really low after Adpocalypse. Not only that, the views were insanely low. It killed 
my channel. And it took me such a long time to realize your channel's dead. Slava told me that. He's like, your channel's dead. You should maybe think about creating another channel. And I was like, no, no, I am not doing that. I am not starting over from scratch. Like you have no idea how disheartening and like devastating it was to lose this channel that had given me so much. It had helped me make something of myself. It made me proud of myself. I was proud. It was like my little world. So to think of abandoning it and starting over was a nightmare. I also put that same like mindset into my money. I was like, my channel's not dead and I am not broke. I can't admit the fact that I'm broke. I'm not broke. It had been about four to five years since I really had to pinch pennies and watch the money that I had spent. And during that time, it was amazing. I had never been wealthy before in my life. It was like a rags to riches type story. Admitting to myself that I was broke or I was poor, it was out of the question. The reason I think I couldn't admit to myself that I was broke is because I kept having hope. So this was in 2017, I believe it was that summer. I was at that point to where I just threw my hands up, I surrendered, my white flag was up. I felt like I just needed to get the hell away from YouTube. I left YouTube, you may remember, I left YouTube for like three months. I remember I wouldn't do anything all day. I would watch YouTube videos, I would just sit around and think about maybe filming. And I did this for three months. It wasn't planned. I was just so fucked in the head at the time. I was mind fucked because of all this shit that I was going through. I was depressed. I had absolutely no desire to do anything. I couldn't even force myself to get up and do my makeup and film a video and edit it. Slava would say, are you gonna film this week? You really need to film. You know, our money is starting to dwindle. And I kept saying, no, it's not. We have the money, we have the money. And every time we needed something, I would always say, oh, we have the money, you know? And we didn't have the money. I was lying to myself because it was the only way I could cope. The reason why Slava wasn't working is because he was waiting for his work thing to come through to where he could work here in the country because he's from Russia. So it's like a whole long drawn out process. And we were in the middle of that process. So he couldn't work. So I was the one who had all this pressure on me to work. I would just constantly say, oh, I know I need to get up, but I just don't feel like it. And I think that had a lot to do with the fact that I was depressed. I physically felt lazy, you know? You know how you are when you're depressed and you physically have no strength? It was always tomorrow I would film or tomorrow I'm gonna do this or that. And I, I would force myself to get up and like build a set or something, like to work the same amount of hours and put the same amount of effort in for less money was the worst feeling in the world and I couldn't bring myself to do it. I was still accepting the fact that it was over and it took me probably a good year to really accept it. At this point, we finally came to the conclusion that we were definitely going to lose our house. It was going to foreclose. I have a video about that, which I will link below. Once we hit that point, I still couldn't admit that we were broke. Slava would be like, we can't afford that, Breelin. We can't do this. We can't do that. And I said, yes, we can. What do you mean? I am not poor. He's like, we're poor. We're poor. And we actually were. But I was like, we're not poor. I'll make the money back. But I couldn't because my desire, my drive, everything that made me want to create videos and the fun of what Glitter Forever once was, all of that was gone. It took me a long time to accept that. So after I realized we were gonna lose the house, I said, we're not broke yet. I still have a beautiful car. We lost that too, 
But I was thinking, well, I mean, I'm kind of still living like I have money. We still have money. We still have it. I was in so much denial over my situation and Slava would just like roll his eyes at me. He was like, Breland, we're broke. And I said, I am not going back to being poor. I can promise you, I am not going back to being poor. I can't because I had been poor my whole life. I would never see that amount of money again. This moment, I will never forget it. At this point, we had exhausted our bank account. This was like my point where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm broke. So I was sitting in bed and you know how you can order groceries from Walmart Plus? I had put a couple hundred dollars worth of groceries into my cart. I would buy really expensive name brand stuff, prefab stuff, frozen things. I told Slava, oh, what do you want? Because I'm ordering some groceries. And he said, wait, how much are you getting? I was at two, maybe like a little over $200 worth. And he was like, Breland, you can't, that's too much. What? Too much? What? He said, that's going to put our bank account into the negative. And I said, wait, what? Why didn't you tell me this? And he said, I kept trying to tell you we're broke. We're fucking poor. And I said, you never told me anything about that. You didn't tell me that our bank account was low. <laughs> like he literally told me constantly, bitch, we're poor. We are broke as fuck. I guess it took that to really slap me in the fucking face and say, hey, bitch, we are poor. He told me, Breland, we only have like a hundred, maybe a hundred dollars in the bank account. And he said, I have to get my medicine. We had to get prescriptions filled. No money was coming in for at least a few weeks. And I X'd it out <laughs> and I said, Oh my God, we, we're broke. Ding, 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 ding. We're broke. Finally, the denial, the wall, the Trump wall had come down. And I was finally able to see that when you no longer have money, you no longer get to buy things. You no longer get to do anything. And once I hit that point, I was just like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I mean, shouldn't I have been thinking this like a year prior? Probably. But I was just too devastated over the whole situation. I told Slava, I said, well, we need to save that money. We, we need to maybe just buy like some small things from the dollar store or like cook some stuff. And he was like, yeah, I know. We're poor. We don't have the money to buy all this. I just remember thinking like, I surrender. We're poor. We're losing everything. I've lost my channel. My channel is dead. And we are fucking broke. And it just like made my heart drop. The reality had finally set in that we didn't have money anymore. And I was back to square one of being poor. And no matter how much I tried, which I didn't try really hard for a long time because I was depressed, but no matter how much I tried, I still couldn't make any money. The next day, I walked around my gigantic mansion and I started pointing. We're selling this. That's got to go. We don't need this. Like Breland had finally come back. The Breland, the hustler that was gone for a long time. I am a hustler at heart. I hustle and I make money when I need to make money. But I was in this fantasy land in my mind that caused me to be completely cloudy minded and I couldn't like admit these things to myself. And so I said, we need to have a huge estate sale. We need to sell this couch that we have. We need to sell all these TVs that I had bought for the house. We need to sell anything and everything we possibly can. And that's what we did. And I started hustling, baby. And I had this estate sale for at least two weeks. 
and we made a good chunk of change. We made about 10 grand. And I was really, really proud because then I knew like I had hustled, I made this money, and this was the money that we were gonna use to move. I started to hustle again. And I kind of started to build up some confidence in myself. There was also a moment, I forgot to mention, after I realized we were broke, that I cried. And I don't cry. I'm not a crier. I tear up sometimes in videos, but crying? like sobbing is not something I do. And I remember hugging Slava and we were just like rocking back and forth. And I was like, I lost everything, you know, like it's over. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And Slava was like, it's okay, it's okay. You know, he was consoling me, but I just needed that time to accept my situation. And I think that really helped to just cry and, and let it all out. And after that, I never cried again. Now that I'm done crying, it's time to get my ass up and start hustling. It's time to get my ass out of this situation. And I hustled and I hustled and Slava got a job finally and him and I worked together and we were able to get through a house foreclosure. We were able to buy a car that was in our price range which we still have and I'm not planning to upgrade. And we were able to do the impossible in our minds at the time. We got us an apartment afterwards. I think we had moved into the apartment that summer, that following January of 2020, you gotta love 2020, is when I started this channel. I had a good year, maybe a year and a half to accept the fact that I was broke. And then at that point, me and Slava would joke about it like, oh, we're broke, we're broke. Oh, we're too broke for that. You know, we would make a joke out of it because that was the only thing we could do. And then I started making jokes about it here on this channel. And y'all seem to really relate to it because a lot of us bitches out there are broke. A lot of us live paycheck to paycheck and we lived like that for a good two years after we lost everything. So after my denial, after crying, and after busting free of that denial and working my ass off to get out of that situation, I am here. We lived in that little apartment in Alexandria for a year. That's how long our lease was. And we just moved here to New Orleans in July of 2020. And it was kind of scary because COVID was really bad here. Ever since I've been here in New Orleans, I have been hustling and working my ass off. And one of those things includes OnlyFans. And I have documented my journey from the very day I signed up. I have that footage of me actually signing up for it. And now I have made, I have made a decent sum of money that is over $10,000. We are doing better than we have in a long time. I am just in such a good place now. I have such a beautiful and loving and warm audience here. I absolutely love making videos on this channel because it's refreshing to be able to be myself and to make a little extra coin with it. And the fact that y'all supported me when I was down and out, y'all were the ones who paid for my OnlyFans and gave me a little tiny bit of your hard-earned money to put me up on a pedestal. That is the most incredible thing that humanity does. Humans work together to help each other and you have helped me so much. And I am so thankful and so grateful for you. Without you, I wouldn't have shit. And I am just so fucking grateful. And I have so much love for this audience and for you watching. And I finally crawled out of that hole and I feel like I can see the light. And I am enjoying every fucking minute of it and not taking any of it for granted. I am also making sure that I keep an eye on my spending and I have done any and everything I possibly could 
to cut corners and save money, even with the furniture that I bought for my new apartment, which I was also able to afford, which is my second apartment here in New Orleans, I was able to afford it only a month after starting OnlyFans. I just wanna say thank you so much. I'm sorry that this video was so long, but I couldn't just say, oh, well, I just all of a sudden accepted this at this time. Like it needed to be explained. Now, I'm gonna link all the videos below that are related to, you know, my whole downfall and stuff. If you wanna see all that, I will link it below. And if you still wanna support me on OnlyFans, I am having a sale right now, $3. That's for a first full month, only $3. And you get a lot of goodies for that price. Okay, so my voice is about to go out. I've gotta go. Thank you so much. You mean so much to me, and I couldn't ask for better support from an audience. It's so refreshing. So I'm going to go and drink some tea or something, and I'll see you in the next one. I love you very, very much. I really do, and I appreciate you. Peace out, my little bitch goblin. Fire-breathing bitch goblin. That's it. Okay, bye.